Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel where I teach you basics of mechanical engineering. Friends, today we are going to solve a numerical problem based on the design procedure of hydrodynamic journal bearing. Friends, you have to use a data book in order to study this topic. Here, I will solve the problem in a step by step manner and what is needed is to follow the steps properly and we use a data book of machine design. Friends, before I start to solve this numerical problem, I request you to go through my previous lecture on hydrodynamic journal bearing design procedure so that you will get familiar to the design process of hydrodynamic journal bearing. The link of the video is provided in the description. So go through that video first. So without wasting any time, let's start the topic. Friends, here our objective is to design hydrodynamic journal bearing with the given data. Data provided is as follows. See on the screen. Friends, the diameter of the journal is given as 60 mm and the RPM of the journal is given as 1020 RPM and friends, the minimum fluid frame thickness is also given to us here as 0.04 mm and friends the radial load is also given to us as 2.8 kN. So this is the data that is given to us. Now friends here we will write the given data from the above and where dj is the diameter of the journal which is 60 mm, f radial is the radial load which is 2.8 kN and H minimum, minimum is the minimum fluid film thickness which is 0.04 mm. Also N is the RPM 1020 RPM. So this is the data that is given to us. Now friends, let us come to the step number one. In step number one, what we will do? We will assume a L by D ratio where L is LB is the length of the bearing and DJ is the diameter of the channel. Okay friends, now I will tell you how we will assume this L by D ratio. Here we have assumed L by D ratio is equal to 1 where LB is the length of the bearing and DJ is the diameter of the general as I have already told you. You are free to choose any value of L by D ratio. Friends, the, L, the value of L by D ratio varies between 0 0.5 to 2. So you have to choose the value of the L by D ratio between these two values that is 0 0.5 to 2. Now if we are designing for a long bearing that is a bearing which is designed to carry a higher load then we will choose a L by D ratio greater than 1 and smaller than 2. And if we are using a general bearing which is designed to carry a load which is smaller in magnitude then what we have to do we have to choose the value of L by D ratio between 0 0.5 to 1 but in most of the engineering applications the value of the L by D ratio is taken as 1 so we will choose the most common value which is equal to 1 so the value of L by D ratio this L by D ratio is chosen as 1 so from this what we will do we will find the length of the bearing how we will use the diameter of the journal which is 60 mm okay which is already given to us in the problem so from here we will find the value of length of the bearing using this assumed value of l by d ratio so the first step is completed now we will come to the step number two here we will calculate unit bearing pressure as shown on the screen so look at or your computer screen we will calculate the value of unit bearing pressure how we will calculate the value of unit bearing pressure see friends the unit of bearing pressure can be find out using this formula here f radial is given to us from the above and lb is the length of the bearing which is also the given data and the dj is the diameter of the channel sorry L, lb is the length of the bearing which is calculated in the step number one so we will put all these value in this formula the value of radial load that is 2.8 into 10 raised to power 3 newton and the lb is 60 mm and dj is 60 mm so we will calculate the value of unit bearing pressure as follows now friends 
come to the step number 3 here we will check the value of unit bearing pressure here we will check the value of this unit bearing pressure with the value of unit bearing pressure for the machine tool application given in the data book and check if it lies within the limits or not okay friends now see on the screen this is the table which will be available in your data book you have to look for this table and our application here is machine tool application we are designing the bearing for machine tool application so for machine tool application the value of the unit bearing pressure varies from 0.5 to 1 now we will look at our calculated value of unit bearing pressure our calculated value of unit bearing pressure was 0.78 newton per mm square and which is clear that it lies between this range that is 0.5 to 1 okay so the value of unit bearing pressure which is calculated in the step number 2 is within the limit so we will proceed further now suppose a case if that the unit of unit bearing pressure calculated from the step number 2 does not lies between the value of unit bearing pressure for our application that is the machine tool application then what we have to do we have to go to the step number 1 again and choose another value of L by D ratio if the value of the unit bearing pressure is greater than the value for the range which is specified for the machine tool application that is it is greater than 1 suppose that is the value of unit bearing pressure is greater than 1 then what we will do in that case we will go to the step number 1 and take a value of L by D ratio which is greater than 1 and proceed further and follow the step number 2 again and again we will calculate the value of unit bearing pressure with the new value of bearing length which is calculated by the new value of L by D ratio which is greater than 1 in the in this case so the value of unit bearing pressure we will again calculate and again check with the application from this table and we will go to the step number 3 and check it properly and if this condition is satisfied then we will proceed to the next step so the next step is to calculate the radial clearance so in this step that is the step number 4 here we will calculate radial clearance denoted by small c assuming that we are using bevet bearing and for bevet bearing the value of radial clearance is given as shown by using design data book so from design data book i have taken this value of radial clearance okay which is c which is as follows okay friend from this value to this value where rj is the radius of the journal so the radial clearance can be find out by substituting the value of radius of the journal which is equal to the half of diameter of the journal that is the diameter of the journal is 60 mm then the radius of the journal is 30 mm so i have put here 30 mm okay friend so it is 0 0.05 mm so radial clearance we have gotten now friends let us go to step number five in step number five what we have to do we have to find the minimum fluid film thickness now fortunately it is given in the question that the value of minimum fluid film thickness is 0 0.04 so we will take the minimum fluid film thickness as 0 0.04 mm otherwise we have to use the formula to calculate the value of minimum fluid film thickness now the formula is provided here using this formula we can calculate the value of minimum fluid film thickness by using the value of radial clearance which is calculated in the step number 4 how we will put here 0 0.4 into c that is 0 0.05 so 0 0.4 into 0 0.05 we will get a value of minimum fluid thickness but fortunately it is given to us already so we will use with use the minimum fluid film thickness as 0 0.4 mm 0 0.04 mm okay friends now we will go to the step number six now in step number six what we have to do we have to calculate the value of l by d ratio and h min by c ratio 
Now in this case the value of L by D ratio is taken from step number 1 as 1 so I have taken it as 1 and the value of H min Y C ratio is calculated from the step number 4 and 5 as H min Y C that is H min is 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.05 which is C so this is 0 0.8 so the value of H min Y C will come out to be 0 0.8 now friends we have got this ratio L by D ratio and H min by C ratio. Now L by D ratio is 1 from step 1 and H min by C ratio is 0 0.8. So look into this table. Friends, listen it carefully. It is only a sample table and I have taken here only a part of the table to only show you how the value of various parameters are used which are given in the table to solve the problem. Here only a part of the table which contain data related to this particular problem is considered. Friends, you have to search this table in your data book. It is a long table which will give you the whole data and you can use it accordingly. Now friends, our H min by C ratio is 0.8 and our assumed value of L by D ratio is 1. Corresponding to these two values, we will look at the value of S0, the value of CFP, that is the coefficient of flow parameter, and the FP, the coefficient of flow, sorry, this is the coefficient of flow parameter, and this is flow parameter, and the QS by Q value. Here, QS is the side leakage of the lubricant, and Q is the lubricant flow rate, and the ratio of unit bearing pressure to the maximum pressure in the bearing, that is the Pmax is given as 0.527 so you will write down these values separately I have already written these values separately here so see this friends the S0 is 0 0.631 okay friend the CFP is 12.81 and the FP is 3.58 and the P unit by P max is 0 0.527 and QS by Q is 0 0.28 okay friends this is taken from here all the values are taken from here that is this table okay friend this is s0 is 0 0.631 cfp is 12.81 okay friends all the values are taken from that table according to the lyd ratio and h min by c ratio so we have taken these values and written here now friend see the step number 8 